Good day, good afternoon, good morning, good night from wherever you are tuned in with us here at Comeza Radio Podcast. The show is our monthly coaches learning forum here at Comeza Global Online Channels. We hope to engage with you and our guests on a very important topic this evening. I'm reaching out to you from Johannesburg, South Africa. We are having a very bright day today and a beautiful sunset. I just checked it now. Uh, the sun is as orange as an orange. <laughs> I can see my guest is in the studio. I will be greeting her just now and asking her to greet you as well. And thank for, thanks for those who are already tuned in. Just as a reminder, we are on a series and it's about coaching models. We have started with the series session one on the 6th of September, and we were talking about the star coaching model with coaches Ramavaka, Avel Chimule, and Krista Hendricks. The second session was on the 13th of September, and that one was on change coaching model with coach Tosi Mpandle. The recent one was session number three on the 22nd of September, and it was on fuel coaching model with coach Rabula Mudivani, who was also joined by coach Ulrike Pretorias, who was tackling the topic communication in workplace coaching, specifically looking at active listening, and effective listening. We are certainly going to bring her back at the end of this series. We have not done justice to the topic and I'm sure she will be willing to come back. The podcasts for all these sessions are available at Commerza Radio Podcast. You can get it at www.commerzaradiopodcast.com or you can go to any of your common platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and just put in the Commerza Radio podcast and you will be able to catch up on the previous sessions. Today's session, which is the 27th of September, is the fourth session, and we are looking at the Achieve Coaching Model with the one and the only I know she doesn't like me calling her prof, but for the benefit of, <laughs> for the benefit of my listeners, I'm going to defy her and call her Coach Prof Sash Paruk. And then of, after I've done that, I can go back to just calling her Coach Sash. <laughs> so um, her show will also be available as a podcast at the end. And you can always listen to it every now and then you, when you want to catch up on this. Let me also make a prior announcement regarding the session number five that will be taking place on the 4th of October. It is a Tuesday. Same time, 1800 hours to 2000 hours South African Standard Time. And the theme is going to be the clear coaching model. And our guests will be coaches, Sedi Mantuku and uh, Sedumo Ananias Chiloani. Please save the day. Yeah, back to our topic of today and our guest. Let me remind you that we have full two hours of really unpacking this model. And I know Coach Sash is going to be into detail, going into details about the model. 
I want to remind you as well that the show is based on our principle, the idea. We inform and entertain. We develop and educate. We empower and support. We associate and network. That is the idea. We are the mind, the journey, the destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. Coach Sash, greetings. Welcome. Greetings. Hi, Sam. (laughs) (laughs) Prof. (laughs) Are you well? I'm well, thanks. I hope everyone's well. You're right, it's a lovely sunset here, but uh, getting dark pretty pretty quickly, eh? Yeah, yeah, but this, this, the sunset is so beautiful. I wish I could sit outside in the garden and have a cup of coffee and a piece of cake. <laughs> no, forever and ever, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, as coaches, we always remind ourselves that... Uh, we need to have time for ourselves. The me time, eh? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Coach Sash, uh, a number of uh, sessions have taken place, as I've said, and we are just building on to what has happened before. But I would like us to give people the context. You you participated in the the ten minute session, which was really like a marathon. And you had you had wanted to unpack the model so much in detail. I'm very excited that we have so much time today to do justice to this model. So I'm going to ask you to bear with me and not rush into tackling the model. But let's just lay the foundation and tell our listeners who Coach Sash is. And uh, maybe starting with... Uh, what 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 did you study and where did you study and where have you been all all, all around as a perspective and, and 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 I will really appreciate if you take your time and introduce yourself and greet our listeners. Yeah, sure, Sam. Um, I'm I'm delighted to be here. I, I'm sincerely delighted to be part of this collaborative learning uh, um, process that we have. You know and. I think you pulled the thread very well between uh, like what we're going to talk about today and, uh, uh, you know, what we've looked at in our other learning sessions. Um, so uh, some know me as Serge, some know me as Shazia. Uh, oh, my word, I have a, a number of uh, names. Um, my late mother used to call me Seshni. But that's when I knew she was like really angry with me, you know. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> some some know me, some don't. You know, uh, in in my travels, I've 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 been uh, in many sectors. So so you know, to answer your 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 first question, um, my studies. Gosh, and I'm giving my age away now. Uh, my studies, formal study, well, obviously matric finished in 1985. And then, um, you, you know, those were uh, uh, days when we had teachers who, who taught uh, uh, in, in a particular um, vernacular. And uh, some of our science teachers were great and many were not. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> So my my formal, you know, tertiary education uh, uh, began at um, what was then called uh, the University of Dublin Westville. That was 1986. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like many people in those days, uh, uh, we had very limited options, you know, um, if you were regarded as uh, someone with a bit of potential. You were supposed to do uh, teaching or law or medicine, uh, you know, uh, something like that. And uh, if you were not, uh, uh, sadly, you know, you, you, you were relegated to what were then called uh, the technical colleges. And, and I'm, I'm so glad that they, they now like the, the further education, you know, yeah. uh, models. So at UDW, I, I wanted to become a teacher. Um, I wanted to become a teacher with those uh, limited options. Seemed like um, a good thing 
or an appropriate thing at that time for a female to study because you're going to finish at uh, three o'clock and then you're going to uh, uh, go home and attend to your husband and children and so on and so forth. So I was, I was at UDW and that lasted a full six months, uh, nothing more, nothing less. And mm. um, I, was, I was kicked out, uh, uh, actually, um, for uh, being a little too outspoken, uh, particularly on, you know, human rights issues and, and uh, you know, agitating for, for women and children and old people and, uh, you know, all those sorts of things, which, which was, uh, you know, linked to the context at the time. So, yeah, that was me, kicked out, uh, um, a sort of dropout. And my parents said, look, take some time uh, to find yourself. And um, so I went back uh, to London and to Edinburgh and uh, took some time, basically, to find myself uh, because my late father, you know, had this saying uh, uh, that he raised us on that if you're looking for yourself, you'll find yourself walking the streets of London, you know. And um, I think that 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 was useful. It was handy. Uh, I was so fortunate from a music point of view because I, I'm such a lover of, of, of all types of music to be a, a part of what was then called uh, the, the anti-apartheid uh, free concert, you know, like we've had uh, live aid and, and that, you know, all those kinds of things, either from the UK and whatever it is, to, to try and assist South Africa just to, to find its feet. And, um, you, you know, a memorable day to me there uh, uh, in those six months was uh, this free concert at a place called Clapham Common. And uh, they flew in Sting and they flew in Sade and my word, you know, uh, uh, they, they, like I, I had this exposure suddenly to all these people whose, whose music I'd listened to, you know, uh, um, from reggae to classical music to rock and, and whatnot. It was mind blowing. So I came back after the six months. And my parents said, well, look, young lady, uh, uh, we believe you have found yourself now. And um, so where to from here? Uh, you can't go back to uh, Durban Westfall, which was, uh, of course, then, you know, uh, known as a black campus. So I was like kicked out of a black campus and I'm black. <laughs> so uh, then I had to go to what was then uh, the University of Natal, Durban. and. Um, I, uh, like many people, uh, took a, a BA social science uh, degree, you know, uh, always interested in people, uh, human behavior, that, that sort of thing. And so that was a three-year uh, degree, and uh, it went from 1987. It was complete in, uh, nine, at the end of 1989. And uh, I had some lovely exposure, you know, to, well, some lovely and some not-so-lovely exposure, actually. Um, some lovely exposure to, to some mentors like um, Professor Fatima Mir and uh, the late Neville Jones, you know, uh, these were also people who agitated for uh, feminist issues, women's rights. Uh, uh, Neville himself uh, uh, was an uh, ardent trade unionist. Uh, Hassan Amra was one of the guys who set up Kusatu, et cetera, et cetera, you know. And so, so that, that was great. And the normal person, Sam, uh, for a BA social science or a BA degree, you know, you do four, four modules in your first year, you do four modules in your second year, and then you, you finish off with your two, you know, your, your so-called major subjects. And uh, me being me, a bit of a nut, I guess, um, I did three and a half, three and a half, three. Uh, so the, the exposure was varied. My, my, my first dream in the social science thing was to bring to South Africa something that wasn't here. And at that time, like it was sort of located within the psychology profession. And it, it was something known as uh, psychodrama. 
And uh, it was a model that came from uh, the UK, you know, and it was basically saying, you know, for any, any people uh, and individuals who've been exposed to trauma, uh, uh, merely talking about it is, is not going to, to, to be enough. The, the spoken word is sometimes not enough, you know. So psychodrama was basically, uh, you know, the principle that either individually or in groups, you will find a way to share uh, in a sort of artistic, maybe uh, uh, acting through drama uh, perspective, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 what your trauma had been, but with a view to assisting your healing. And uh, so, so my first choice of majors was um, a psychology and uh, English. Uh, I, I loved uh, literature, you know. And um, so English did continue, and it ended up being my major, uh, you know, in my third year. But... Um, the speech and drama side didn't really work out. It was sort of uh, um, but racially exclusive, you know, and uh, I, I didn't really have a feeling of, of comfort. And um, so that's, that's how, you know, the, the English and the psychology combination was the, the thread that, that ran through this uh, BA social science. So, yeah, that's that. And, um, you know, so I, I did some exciting modules, uh, like I, I did some philosophy and I did some Jewish studies, you know, uh, uh, as part of this trying to fill uh, the academic gap. So there's the academic, you know, formal thing that you're going to lectures and, well, some of us went to tutorials and some of us played cards um, and some of us continued, you know, to... to to agitate for these, these same causes I, I've talked about already. And um, so they were like great experiences. I, I loved uh, uh, the philosophy. I loved the sociology, you know, uh, 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 groups of people and how it sort of resonated with our own uh, uh, sort of, what can I say, framework of, of uh, Ubuntu here you know, in Africa. And, you know, I am who I am uh, through others. Ngumuntu, Ngumuntu, Ngaban. And um, so, yeah, that, that was uh, that, you know. Uh, hence my, my love for, for all those things and then trying to blo uh, block...
Thank you, thank you. Uh, so yeah, to sort of summarize the study side, you know, I, I went to a number of different universities. So the social science degree, I finished in 1987. Colleagues, I've sent them the new link. 92 to 1994, I was at the University of, uh, uh, it was University of Port Elizabeth at that time. And I did my master's in clinical and counseling psychology, and I registered as a, a clinical and counseling psychologist, you know, with the, the board. Yeah. Yeah, and then I went on, uh, and I studied in Afrikaans. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, wow, how is your Afrikaans now? By uh, 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 <laughs> I guess you didn't have a choice then, right? No choice, no choice. And we were um, we were taught by the Enghe Kerk uh, Dwamenis, you know. So yeah. these guys kicked with us. <laughs> but very good. It, 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 good. it, it, uh, yeah. it teaches discipline, you know. And then hmm. I, I finished off my uh, doctorate uh, at the University of Fort Hare. Um, I, I did that from 1995 to 1998 uh, part-time. Uh, you know, wow. my work, and um, I uh, it was it was uh, wow, it was uh, a campus to be at either full time or part time. Uh, uh, the late uh, uh, you, you know, uh, Governor Mbeki, uh, uh, Tata Governor Mbeki was uh, there as the chancellor, you know, a uh, uh, wise, yes. learned man, and uh, so. You know, being the first female and, uh, you know, finishing a doctorate, and that was like a big thing in those days. Uh, it's mm. Not so much now. Uh, 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 it's, it's nice. There's a lot of people, many people who've got doctorates and things like that now. And, um, yeah, so, so he kind of took me under his wing, you know, and, and that was like, wow. <laughs> you know, mm. when you sit at the giant kind of thing. Yeah. So that, uh, that's that. And then... You know, I, I I worked in a number of different places. You know, I will either get to that or, or not. It, it doesn't matter really. And mm. um, so it was while I was uh, uh, driving transformation at uh, Parliament, uh, mm. 2007 to 2013, and, uh, you know, diversity, et cetera, et cetera, that... Um, uh, you, you know, you realized uh, uh, how you could apply all this. Again, you know, the theme always being uh, people focus and uh, learning and growth and everything that we do in coaching, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we, yeah. Each one, teach one kind of thing. So, so that's mm. uh, that. And then 2011. Could, could you tell then that, uh, I mean, in hindsight, that, Actually, coaching was always there in your practice, even though you might have not called it coaching. Yeah, sure. Um, I think because, you know, uh, coaching is this collaborative process. Uh, you know, we don't uh, lecture uh, to our clients. Uh, uh, you know, we collaborate with them. Uh, we try and assist in some way, either with a life issue or a work-related issue. Or we work with organizations. Or we work with leaders. We are leaders ourselves. We advise. We, you know, we work in a number of different capacities depending on our experience and, uh, you know, uh, how much structure we like to work with or have we like hmm. Mm. Wonderful. I, I, so as you were researching this model, uh, how connected you became with the, the model and the coaching per se? Yeah, uh, you're talking about this model? Uh, um, yes. So, so look, I, I quite like, uh, uh, I like a combination of uh, flexibility and uh, structure. Um, I, I, I actually, I actually personally feel quite safe uh, when I'm when I'm in a, a sort of slightly structured 
uh, systemic, you know, kind of uh, context. Mm. Uh, that, mm. that, that feels like my home. And then from yeah. there, like, like I feel okay about me. <laughs> and I feel like, <laughs> but I also realize, hey, you know what? I don't have the, all the answers for sure. And um, absolutely, and it's not, and you're not expected to have all the answers, right? True, true. Nobody is. And you know, it's this lifelong learning quest, uh, which I think, I think coaches have at their core. That, that's just, just my personal opinion, you know. I, 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 think, I think coaches love learning, uh, lifelong learning. You know? I wonder if we have any choice. <laughs> Oh, no, I mean, if, I mean, if you can coach uh, uh, professionals to the ordinary people, it, it suggests that you're gonna have to be uh, continuously learning so that you are able to to deal with the complexities that are presented to you as you engage with your clients, right? No, absolutely, absolutely, you're spot on on that, absolutely. Yeah. But I'm very, I'm very excited to hear from you about this rich model. As I was, uh, like all of us, going through it uh, in the notes, I just couldn't wait to have this session with you, knowing very well that you were tasked by us to, to research it a little bit deeper and come and educate us. <laughs> no, sure. Um, I think the, 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 the quest here is, is assisting people uh, to grow. Uh, hmm. You know, the, the thread between like the grow model and, uh, you know, we've mentioned the fuel model and uh, reach and, and the, 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 the podcasts uh, that I think are vital that commits us doing uh, hmm. to facilitate uh, not only the learning of, of us as, as coaches and, you know, we kind of, we're learning and we're collaborating with one another. But for, for anyone who's interested in, in uh, joining a podcast, for example, later on, because maybe they just didn't have time on a Tuesday. Uh, um, yes. You know? Um, and and so, so it's, it's sort of local and global at the same time, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so the thread, you know, you, you, you actually pulled the thread at the beginning. Uh, between the different coaching models, uh, you know, that we've had so far. And, and we look forward to the, the up and coming ones. So, so I think, you know, most coaching models gr stem from that grow model. And, mm. uh, you know, and from there, people have added on uh, either research type people or sometimes or, 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 or whether it's human resource specialists, OD specialists, change catalysts, or all these people who uh, are leaders, or all these people have somehow uh, uh, built on essentially that, that model, you know. And, um, and so we've had the different, uh, uh, and we're very lucky to have the different sort of uh, acronyms uh, mm. uh, come up, you know, and, and, and that's the link actually to uh, the Achieve uh, uh, model which, which we're doing today. Yeah. And, you know, that acronym and, uh, the, you know, the, these, these uh, models have varying degrees of, of structure, but I think the, the thread in all the models we are, we are trying to share with, with ourselves and, uh, uh, you know, our listeners and things is is this collaborative process of of trying to work with people and trying to to help them find their their niche and uh, if if there's a a problem for example well how how can we how how can we work together where where are we now uh where would we like to go and and how hmm. do we sort of close that gap you know hmm. I, 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 I'm very proud to say that uh, uh, I'm associating your names with your models that you are researching. I don't know whether that is good or bad. <laughs> Whenever I see Coach Rapula, I think of Fuel, <laughs> coaching model. When I see Coach Tosi, I see change coaching model. When I see uh, Sadie, I see clear coaching model. <laughs> is it good or bad? <laughs> 
no, it's very good actually because I mean, uh, from you know some of the learning platforms I, I have been fortunate to attend or or listening to the podcasts afterwards, I, I've learned so much. Um, mm. And uh, uh, Tosi, I'm going to tease you if you are here. And <laughs> she's here. <laughs> Yeah, Tosi, I'm going to tease you and say uh, she is such a proponent of a change model that um, she changed the dates of this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) That was your conversation with her. We didn't change anything. No, you never did. But, you know, we we have that kind of multifaceted, you know, uh, we, we professional colleagues, you know, we've got a collegial relationship and we also mm. uh, just two women getting to know each other and support each other in this coaching field. So, mm. but nevertheless, I mean, the excitement, uh, Tosi, that you expressed uh, uh, and similarly the ex- excitement I have at, at, at what you shared, uh, that that was in sync, you know? Mm. Mm, yeah. mm. And I'm glad that uh, it's not only me who having to reach out to you to remind you of the, or to wish you well for the upcoming event. I'm glad fellow coaches are reaching out to each other and say, hey, you are on tonight. We are looking forward. Please uh, be strong. <laughs> it's wonderful, absolutely. isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so mm. I, I, I think... Let, I- let's, let's, let's take it on. Uh, Give us the what what did you come out in your research of this model and take us through the the seven steps because I want us to spend most of the time learning from you about this model uh, technical side of it and also how do you think we should be applying it? Yeah, sure. So look, if 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 my colleagues here and, and any listeners uh, don't mind. I'm I'm going to go into a slightly more technical, structured uh, mode now. Yes. Okay. And um, uh, if you don't mind, uh, perhaps uh, we can, you know, people can just jot down like questions or suggestions and things and, and we can, you know, discuss them afterwards. Yes. I, I'm watching the chat box and if... Uh, as they drop questions, I will I will make you aware. You don't have to worry. I'll, I'll be your eyes. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so so look, <clears throat> this achieve model. <clears throat> excuse me, it has uh, seven steps, right? So that's the mnemonic, and <clears throat> the actual, uh, uh, um, you know, the A C H I E V E, the seven steps. They 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 very succinctly uh, uh, stand for the the seven. <clears throat> Uh, uh, steps that are involved. And uh, I I found that very handy because also, you know, if you want to Google it and if if you're someone like me who sort of thinks in pictures, um, there there are some very beautiful uh, 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 pictures and and diagrams uh, uh, that you find. Uh, So, you you know, it's for for people who like to read uh, or you can listen to it. Or, or there's nice diagrams if, if you like pictures, right? So, so for me, I like the combination of, of, of the writing and the pictures. Yeah, that, that's mm. how I do it, right? And so the, the, the A is for assessing the current situation, right? Mm. And C is the creative brainstorming alternatives to current mm. situation. And the third step is honing goals, the H. Uh, and the fourth, the I, is initiating options, you know. And five is evaluating those options. Yes. Six is uh, uh, the, the valid action plan design. And seven is the encourage momentum. So, you know, once people become familiar with the model and, and some of the detail that, that we, you know, we will chat about later, um, then you'll find that it's very handy because it, it's something that allows you to, to lead yourself if you are in a self-learning uh, mode. And it also allows you to, to have conversations 
uh, with with your clients, you you know, and and maybe provide some direction and structure to those conversations. So, if you don't mind, if I can go into a a little bit uh, more detail on on the actual. Uh, eight. Yes, I think I would want you, I would want you to do that because. I've just actually realized that there are there are the, the the various pictures and the scriptures are using different weights, but probably they all mean the same. So I think uh, go into each one of them so that we, from your perspective, we are able to 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 learn from you because I I I think uh, when you Google this thing, you get too many other various versions of the same thing. Yeah, no, sure, sure. So, so look, uh, this is just what I got out of it, right? Uh, so, so the the first step was like assessing the current situation. Now, 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 what that meant, uh, 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 you know, you know, according to the literature, is that you you focus on on developing an understanding of the current state. And the research behind this, the sort of logic behind this is you can't understand where you want to go if you don't know where you are right now. And the you here, you are referring to your client, right? Yes, yes. And and definitely your client, your coachee, you know, or mm. client. Yeah. And some, you know, you know, there are some very interesting, just just a few that I picked uh, a few questions that you you know you could ask as a coach to to link to assessing current situation so 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 how one could uh, structure it is is a few questions like uh, well, what's happening in your work uh, environment at the moment you know um how do how how do you feel about it uh, what's working well for you at, at the moment what's not you know what would you like to be different you know and so on and so forth so uh, that's the assessing, you know, uh, working with the person to 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 ground them, and uh, in terms of look, where am I now? You, you know, um, mm. because often we don't do that, and none of us do that really. And so, so we need sometimes some outside intervention, and and in this case, it's it's the coach. Uh, uh, yeah, bring that outside intervention to say, right, ground you. Where are you now? So mm. the second, uh, the second one is, you know, the the C, the creatively brainstorming alternatives. So, for me, what was pertinent from the research was, okay, now, now that you've established your your current state, uh, what what some alternatives, uh, what some some future states, perhaps, you know, to put it in different maybe OD language. Um, what are potential alternatives? And at this stage, what I like, and again, what we all do as coaches is you're gentle throughout this process. You, you know, you're not, you're not hammering on the yeah. person. You know, you, you, you're gentle because you, you, you're helping to facilitate a, a growth process. So you're gently helping people to explore h- how they may like things to be uh, different and and I think, mm-hmm. uh, look, I, I'm sticking today, if you don't mind, strictly to the work uh, uh, context, you, you know. Yeah. But obviously, again, you, you know, this can be used uh, for executive coaching, for, for personal growth, uh, whatever. Uh, um, but but I, I'm sticking, if you don't mind, to the work context and the professional context of, of working with professionals and, and, you know, assisting them. Uh, um, mm coach to coachy, you know. And so uh, the reason why this part appealed to me is it, it's really not uh, uh, easy for any of us, uh, coaches or coaches in our own lives, to, to imagine alternative uh, uh, states. Uh, in our work life, I mean, many of us know we, we, we've reinvented ourselves uh, mm. three or four times, if you like, 54 years old like me. And, uh, yeah. You know, and, and, and often, often you, 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 you are stuck, but you don't even realize that you are stuck. And therefore, this state, this creatively brainstorming the alternatives 
facilitated by a coach could just make you realize so many other options you are not even aware of, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, you're kind of working with the person, you're looking at how could the situation you're in at work be different? Uh, well, would mm. you like it to be different, you know? Uh, is there something you'd like to change about yourself or other people, you know, some alternative outcomes? You know, and those are some of the questions that, that appeals to me uh, uh, in, in researching this. And then mm. if we sort of move on to, to, to step three of the seven steps, which is, you know, honing the goals, and that, again, I mean, I think all our coaches here will be familiar with the step of helping a coachee to now refine. Now that they, you're sort of trying to unglue, unstuck, facilitate that process with them. Um, how, how do we now refine it? Because obviously, you know, we can't do 10,000 things at the same time. But how are we kind of prioritizing? How are we refining this? So in terms of, you know, the, the kinds of goals they want to achieve at work. So uh, a few questions, you know, I found interesting were, uh, uh, can you break your goals down, uh, for example? Or, or what do you think your objectives are like? What will success look like for you? And uh, you know, mm. do you think maybe some of the building blocks uh, you need, and and you know, and there to 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 make the link also. Uh, sometimes, as coaches, we may find you know, uh, again based on experience and flexibility and adapting to hearing and listening intently to to what the client is saying. So we're not talking all the time, you, you know. We, we're listening very, very deeply and intently. Um, we, we then try to understand and, and facilitate, look, let us also try and assist this person with the, that kind of clarity, you know. And... So if moving on, and, and again, you know, obviously we, we, we pacing this at, at, at what is a comfortable pace for the client. And the reason we can do this is because we're listening intently, you know, mm. uh, to, 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 to the sort of, what would you call it, the, 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 the meta communication what, within their words, uh, what, what is this person trying to look for and how can we assist them to, to bring it to a manageable, um, maybe let me even call it concrete uh, 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 stage, you know. And then we move on to uh, four, uh, step four, which is we, we, we're trying to now work with initial options, you know. And um, so by this stage, you know, if if we've listened intently, if we've tried our best to take things at the, the, the pace of the client, uh, we, we, we should uh, be at a point where the coachee knows where they are. Hmm. They have an idea of, of where they'd like to be. You know, I think in leadership terms, we would call it a vision, for example. Um, but they they would like, they have an idea, they have a picture, you know, this so-called blue sky thinking. They, and they, they, they now ready for this assistance and support that we can give them to, to bridge the gap, you know. And again, we're always going back to that current theme of we are in facilitation mode, we are in coaching mode, we are in facilitation mode, you, you know, that's, that's our self-talk that, that we mm. do when we reflect ourselves as coaches on in each session, you, you know. And um, so at this stage, I think what's very important to, to note for all of us is we're not assessing the options. We, yeah. we are, we're never in a judgment mode as, as coaches and certainly not 
at this fourth stage. You know, we're we not judging. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, we're not assessing their options. We, we're simply assisting them to, to collate them, to, to, to put them together into a, a nice little bite-sized uh, chunk, if I can put it that way, you know. And um, so, like, examples of, of questions we, we could ask are, like, how, how can we achieve these goals now? That 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 you've, you we we've talked about in in in, in the third step, and uh, how could other people now assist you to achieve those goals, and uh, how much time do you, do you think you you'll have? You know, so so you know some people work with uh, uh, you know like you know in culture change when we're doing culture change, uh, Tosi will know uh, more about this, uh, but. When we're doing culture change, for example, uh, uh, and, and we're sort of doing a combination of, of coach and OD, um, hmm. in, that, in that culture change mode, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we're always trying to look and close the gap between the as-is and the to-be state. It's, it's that, yeah. uh, you know, that, that, that change uh, uh, sort of, uh, there's, there's actually, you know, in, in, in just uh, an interesting point uh, in, 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 in human behavior uh, uh, theory, change is actually depicted as a triangle, <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, so when, we, when we're writing the shorthand, you know, trying to make notes quickly on change, like we would yeah. have, like we draw a triangle, you know? And so yeah. then uh, we move on to, to stage five, which is the E, you know, evaluating our options. So, hmm. now, you know, based on the fact that we, we never assessed, we've never judged, and, and we won't, um, that the, the coaches identified now, now several options that we yeah. to, to use to, to achieve their goal. Um, how can we assist them to evaluate their own options? Because now they, they, we've gone broad with them, you know. So, so if you picture it as a diamond, we zoomed out. And now we're starting to zoom in, you know. So yeah. we have a beautiful diamond. And um, we, we're helping them to evaluate and, and, and now make their choices about uh, which... So, so, so they, 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 you, you make them to get to a point of elimination based on the prioritization, right? Absolutely. absolutely. And again, you know, some, some people like to work uh, uh, from a, a, a process of elimination. So if like on a whiteboard, for example, or a flip chart, if we jotted down like, hey, there were 10 uh, uh, options, uh, uh, some people will, will work on, on a basis of striking out maybe seven of the 10. And then they are yeah. at the three. Uh, uh, and, and just coincidentally, those may be some of the more extroverted people. You know, they like brainstorming and things like that in, in, in leadership meetings and as leaders, et cetera, et cetera. There's other people who can immediately go to, there's the 10, there's the same list of 10. But instead of me striking out options, I can immediately spot the three I want to pick, you know. And, and again, linked to that in extroversion, introversion thing, that, that may be um, the, the people who, uh, uh, who are slightly more introverted. So, so where's an, an extrovert in terms of like, you know, trying to draw in my behavioral background and research into this, the same uh, achieve model. Uh, uh, the 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 extrovert tends to go broad first, you know, and so they zoom out and then they zoom in. The introvert does the opposite; they go within. It's a it's a movement inside. Uh, let's call it a depth move, for want of a better term. There's, there's neither, neither one is better, you know, breadth or or depth, uh, and they go inwards. And then that is how they spot. I definitely want to do, you know, those three things in terms of evaluating the options. You know, so, so, so that's that 
fifth step, you know, the evaluating uh, a step. And um, uh, I, I don't know if you want to jump in at any point, Sam. You, you, you know, you. Yeah, I I would like you to to finish the the steps, and then we can maybe also engage. I'm very curious to know in a, in a, in a, in, a, in a coaching setup how one will apply this model. Is it for for the entire coaching program, or is it? Always, always holding it in a session and keep that in mind, because I'm sure that client is going to be jumping from one level to another, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I but let's finish the the all the the seven steps and then we can open it up further. Yeah, sure. Uh, so step six is is you know looking at uh, uh, it's the V. It's it's looking at a valid action plan design. That that's the mnemonic. You know, yeah. So it's it's looking at at vision, and um, you, you know, which which I think you've mentioned in in other conversations, and so have some of our other colleagues here, uh, in terms of uh, 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 leadership and and models and practice in in our practices. You know, uh, working with people in our coaching practices, and so here now you're at the point uh, where. You, you assisting because you have this structure in your mind. Uh, you assisting the coach, uh, the coachee, to have a clearer view, okay, of which options they'd like to 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 pursue. So you you're giving some depth to this actual one or two or three options. Uh, um, but like my experience uh, suggests that. You know, like in the same way, in in a in a uh, 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 in a vision statement, you try and keep it to align, if possible. Uh, and when you're doing a strategic objectives with leaders, uh, you don't actually want more than than three to five uh, max uh, and and mission and and so on and so forth. So so here as well, like my experience says to me that. Like you ideally want to go between one and three, you know, and to bring this, this valid action plan to, to life. And then the last one, the, the seven, which is encouraging momentum, uh, is where we, we like trying to help the person uh, to get a clear plan of, of how to get there. Uh, and this, this phase, we, we are in a very encouraging mode as coaches. Uh, we, 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 it's a lot of, I'll call it love for want of, you know, inverted commas, uh, like people love for one another. Uh, mm. A lot of encouragement that we're doing. And we now driving momentum because we, we never as coaches want to, 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 you know, if a person was stuck in the first place, we, we, we also mm. don't want to take them into an analysis paralysis, uh, uh, you know, where we'll be thinking till the end of time kind of thing and not necessarily uh, translating it in, into action. So, mm. you know, to, to finish off this um, encouraging uh, momentum, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we stay in touch. We keep in touch uh, with our clients. We always encourage them uh, gently. Um, yeah, you, you know they 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 feel safe and supported. Uh, I, I don't if know. if you if you are in a coaching program, say six months to twelve months, and you during your contracting you realize that the achieve coaching model is going to be very good uh, for delivering the product, the outcomes, or the goals for the. For, for the coaching program. Uh, how will you see this model being being used? Uh, is it will you will you overlay it onto the entire coaching program or will it be a point of reference in every coaching session? How will you how will you see yourself applying the, the model to a coaching program, not just a session? Yeah, look, uh, I, 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 personally, I, I, will, I will never apply the model in one session. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it is, then, 
Yeah, no, no. They, then, then you are the seminar. You know, you, <laughs> you like literally functioning as a, as a teacher, you know, a lecturer kind of thing. Um, so you see the model as a, as a, as a, as a tool in your tool bag, and every now and then you will dig deeper and remind yourself. Or oh, by the way, stage step so and so and so talks about one, two, three, and perhaps this is where we are, or something like that. Yes. Um, I, I think, I think, yeah, I, I think, I think, um, we, you, you know, it's a process. Uh, and, and, yeah. and my experience suggests that depending on where the client is, let's say, for example, in a organizations, the majority function in a sort of hierarchical way, you know, yeah. a few, although they may say they function in a matrix model. It, it, it's, it's a rare thing to find. So depending on where the person is, um, it, the person is, has done a lot of introspection themselves. And, uh, you know, they, they are like just uh, growing, continuously growing people. Then this model I have found personally uh, works. Uh, uh, it could work within a six-month period. Uh, yeah. You know, and you, you for example, uh, because of the work the, per the person's already done, it sounds like rushing, but because the person has already done so much work uh, uh, themselves, and they are so ripe for this, 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 uh, shall I call it the cherry on the top? This, this coaching that we're doing, that the, it, it could literally materialize. Uh, six to seven months. Let's let's call it. Interesting. Interesting enough, we always say that uh, coaching is progressive. It, it's not about fixing what went wrong in the past. It's a, that's why in many cases, it coaching is used for for clients who are doing very well, and and this is almost like uh, supporting them on on into the future to do even much more better. So so I, I would like to support you there that that actually uh, uh, um, uh, uh, this could be wonderful supporting somebody that's already done so much groundwork and they just want them to to achieve even more. Absolutely. So look if we if we make the link like seven steps, uh, it it is totally uh, viable to do this if we are, let's say our practices are, 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 are running smoothly, uh, we've got good infrastructure, we are experienced coaches and so on, and you have this, uh, uh, we are forward thinking as coaches, right? Uh, we, we don't mm. really want to dwell on, 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 on history and the past. I mean, perhaps that people will like bring it up uh, periodically. But this model helps us to keep bringing them back uh, uh, to a, a, a structure and a system. So again, you know, linked to what mm. you were saying, it could take seven months, right? And because mm. this type coachy who's narrowed down and got some priorities and they, they want to go with gusto and the, shall I say, the, the uh, position that they hold within the organization, bearing in mind, you can lead from the front or you could lead from the back, you know? Um, yes. They, they, they are just ready for it. At the same time, if you have uh, someone who, who is incredibly stuck, incredibly stuck and uh, prefers a, a slower pace, Right, and again, we're saying slower pace without judging it. So, a slower pace, then it can take 18 months. Uh, there have been one or two instances where you know, like now, if you're contracting with an organization and not an individual, that mm. one could actually contract with that organization for three years. Uh, uh you know, in actual fact, I, I, I know of situations where. It's not even because there is any problem in the organization, but it is a strategic decision of that organization to integrate coaching 
into their human capital development portfolio. So it's almost like the way of being. All our 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 people managers will go through coaching, but more so for fu- for future progressive uh, uh, reasons, other than trying to solve any stuckness. But in the process, you may <coughs> actually experience the the, the spin offs. Uh, and and, and I, I don't know about you, uh, Coach Serge, um, as, as, as we go through these models, as, I, as we go through these models, I t- always put myself in a position of being a learner coach, right? So I'm wondering if I was to take this model and use it for myself now. Um, uh, uh, what will I have to change in my coaching practice? Have you ever find yourself asking that question? And if you took this model? I was saying that uh, I, I, as we're going through the models, I try to put myself in, put myself in a position of a learning coach. And now I've come across this model and I want to bring it into my coaching uh, 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 tools and I want to apply it immediately. What will I have to unlearn? Um, I, I'll have to unlearn um, if, for example, I mean, look, let's, let's, let's talk frankly. Um, I, I'll have to unlearn... Uh, um, either living in the past or and at the same time living totally in the future and assist to ground uh, myself into focus print that they are somewhere. Hmm. You know, I, I'd have to unlearn some of those behaviors. Um, if, for example, hmm. uh, uh, oh, like... I, I, I've 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 lectured for a lot of my life. I've marked postgraduate theses and things at various points in my life. Supervised doctoral students. I've trained and helped to train the first waves of primary healthcare workers. You know, and facilitate uh, uh, the first lay counselors at the aid center. And, and you know, I hold travels and monies that work experience that that we we have. And uh, in my case, it's it's thirty four years. So, so a lot of Could have done that differently. Mm. Or now, when I look back, I could have done that differently at Siaka NGO or 
or, or um, uh, Northwest University or, uh, or uh, UPE, or I could have been a better student, I could have done this differently, I could have listened more, or I could have uh, uh, maybe been more structured or, you, you know, you reflecting, you, you introspecting. I, I find that, that for myself, like I, that reflective state, and, and I do this, like I, I'll either, I'll chat to people about it, uh, you know, trusted uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, I, I'll, I'll sometimes uh, even uh, get some views from some of my, my personal friends on, hey, where do you, like, what's your, what do you see from the outside about, like, where you think I'm at? Um, I'll ask my, I'll chat to my kids. And, 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 and they'll, they probably give me the, the most uh, frank feedback, which is uh, wonderful, uh, you know, because sometimes, you know, others may tiptoe around in their, in their uh, 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 wanting to, to, to be kind, you know. And uh, sometimes, like, like, I'll need it straight on the chin. And, um, you, you know, so I can be, a, 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 when I'm passionate about something, I can, I can, I can be so passionate that I'm like so excited that what's worked about that for me is that passion is infectious. And I hmm. found personally that many of my coaches become excited about this growth process. And at the same time, from this uh, uh, you know, also the fact that we've got to take it on the chin sometimes. Some with some clients, based on my own introspection, at every stage of the coaching process. You know, in, we, I'm going through every pro step of the seven step model, and I'm reflecting at every step. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I also? What can I, uh, you know, assist? I'm growing through this model. I'm learning from my coachee also, you know. I'm talking to my colleagues. So, you know, you know those sorts of things. There's that, that interest. I think that I, I think we all do in different ways. You know, some of us write and keep journals. Some of us like to have uh, a strategic dialogue with our colleagues. So, so that's, that's my answer. Uh, I don't know if I've answered your question, Sam. Mm, mm, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I, it's uh, the beauty is that the beauty is that there are so many model out there, models out there. One must just uh, 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 be able to assess when one can use which model to help what resolve what type of a challenge, right? Correct, hundred percent. Mm. Yeah. So you spoke about uh, the technical side of it. Is there anything now on the application side that based on your research, they have said we need to take note of? I remember very well last, last week uh, when we had uh, Rapula talking about a uh, fuel model. It was, uh, it was discovered by guys who wrote the book that was aimed at assisting or they in an intervention assisting people to 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 achieve stretch targets, uh, and that's why I guess they're called fuel. And the Rabula was joking, say it's like pouring, pouring petrol onto it, so that they 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 can even achieve much more. So what did they say? What what led to this model being brought about? Um, I think there were two researchers. Look, I haven't. I haven't been too strict in terms of uh, uh, remembering theory. Um, yes. But the, the research, you know, because again, I, I don't see coaching as, as a, a, a theoretical academic uh, exercise. Um, yes. The, the, it's an extension of the GROW model. That's easy. Mm, okay. Two researchers, two researchers who looked into this and who said, hey, look, you know what? This grow model seems so great. Let let's build on it. Let let's use it as as a base. And yes. in terms of research, because I also didn't want to get stuck in, yes. in academic theoretical space, you know. 
Um, mm. For me, that's what I took out. But I don't know. May, maybe some of the other colleagues will want to. Yeah. No, it's uh, it was just out. It was just out of interest. It's always very nice to know who came up with the model and and what was going on at that time. Like the Grow model, uh, say say Whitmo, who's regarded as a as a founding father of coaching. He is the one who came up with the Grow model, from what I remember, and. And, and, and that became the foundation of all these models. So it's wonderful always to know. And that's why we are also saying that, uh, who knows, maybe in the future there will be a model by Coach Sesh being quoted like you are quoting the Achieve model. So it was just out of interest. Not that we expect you, of course, to go into the theory of this. That's not the whole idea. The whole idea is just to know that there are models like this that actually simplify coaching for me. That's what I like about the models. They really simplify coaching or any intervention that is aimed at helping our clients out there in resolving the or, or, or achieving their objectives, right? No, absolutely, absolutely. And again, you know, I think our colleagues can also, you know, this is where we've got a lot of flexibility as coaches, you know, we we will obviously, you know, like, like how I, I, I've mentioned, you know, my studies. So actually, all together, my academic studies took nine years. And, yes. Uh, um, in 2011, like my PhD uh, in 1998, the joy of it lasted a full 30 seconds. <laughs> 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 you know, for a lot of hard work. Uh, yes. So, you know, sometimes I even want to, advise uh, now now i'm not talking about my coaches but i want to advise like my my friends or or, or my family you know uh, youngsters growing up in my family what are you doing your phd for like you know um, you're good enough, you're good enough <laughs> really and then you know getting my professorship and I, I it you know i must tell you a joke at this point um it was at uh, uh, the University of Forte, right? Twenty, uh, uh, sorry, um, Northwest, twenty eleven, yeah. and it never even occurred to me. That's how dumb I was, Sam. Uh, it never occurred to me to invite even my husband <laughs> or my late mother to come and uh, uh, you know sit there and see this, you know. Mm. So, so, so they were students and they were colleagues of mine. And what I've always found is, is uh, fascinating in my own life when, when I introspect is that um, they've always been guardian angels. I mean, you're one of my guardian angels on this coaching front. You know that. So yeah. they, they've been these guardian angels. And uh, so, so like at UPE, uh, when it was really difficult, well, I had Professor F uh, uh, Fullart. And, and, and he was a very strict Afrikaans guy. You know, he didn't even pronounce his name Joshua. It was Joshua. Uh, mm. so, so, uh, Professor Joshua Fullard, he was uh, 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 my 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 guardian angel, and in my life, my father was my guardian angel, you know, and, and always will be my late father. And uh, now, like along the way, you know, you see, hey, you've had these guardian angels who've helped to to like kind of nudge you in in particular uh, uh, directions, you know. So. Uh, the, the, the joke is now, when I got this, uh, this I want to say damn, but because uh, we have a professional platform, let me not say that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you, you know, uh, this, this like, obviously now the, the rector turned out to be one of my father's students. And uh, wow. so, so here was this, like, a medical doctor, you know, like a, he was a large man, you know, physically large, and he was, had a, a large, booming personality. I was terrified of him. And um, this, so, so here was this man. And then it was only, you know, because he, he knew me as this Dr. Sesh Parak. It was only when, uh, like, I was giving the, uh, I was get, given this professorship for a contrib my contribution over the years. It, it was called an extraordinary professorship. I think extraordinary means like you are a bit loony, frankly. But um, there you have this uh, uh, professorship because we want to, as your colleagues, 
in this psychology and social science and behavioral field. We want to uh, um, acknowledge uh, uh, your contribution. So, so in this yeah. particular professorship, it was like the, the, the societal to the social uh, transformation. And the joke was that this cloak, you know, that you, you, know, you wear those capes. Yeah. It's bright red. So I felt walking across that stage, I felt like I was the sun rising and setting, as you mentioned. <laughs> Early, you know? So, and, and the, again, the joy lasted a full 30 uh, seconds. Maybe that's my, my bias, but I fully respect, you know, uh, 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 the theoretical uh, 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 research basis, which, which you must have uh, uh, in order to be able to apply a model. And I think from me, uh, that's it, Sam. And um, I'm happy for you to go for it and tidy up anything I left untidy. Or... <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by how you have actually taken us through all these steps and how you interjected in terms of uh, 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 how you will deal with each of these stages in a coaching way. And I like, I like the, when you started, I thought you were going to go through, we we're going to use the, the, the same pattern. When you started by saying at each stage, there are certain type of questions that can actually unlock uh, the situation or, or guide that line. Because we believe very strongly that one of the, of the techniques of coaching is questioning, questions. I've actually got a booklet here from the coachingtoolscompany.com. Uh, they have what they call 549 powerful coaching questions. And what I like about that is that they, they are not just list of 549 questions, but they've grouped them into categories uh, like when you are at the contracting stage. Let's say you are at the, at the very first point of meeting your client and you are contracting, there's certain kind of questions you could ask. Now, when you were going through your stages and you started applying the, the concept of coach, coaching questions, which is very powerful coaching tool, I thought you were going to do that throughout because that was just making it so nice for me because that's a technique in coaching. Uh, uh, they don't say, like I'm looking at the, the what type of questions will you ask uh, when you are establishing the coaching goals. And you set some of them yourself. For instance, they say here, what could work on that will help you the most over the next few weeks? You know, but so I, I, I just wanted to give you feedback to say, there you are, there it is. The, one of the techniques of coaching which you touched on so well that you should not let go of is, is as mastering the powerful coaching questions. Because it's indeed true that all what we do is actually asking questions, but the type of questions we ask make the coaches actually penetrate and access the deeper, deeper powerful self. And yet the questions are just obvious, that, that whether it's open-ended questions or it's closed questions, one way or another, they will move at line. Even if they're trying to avoid the questions, they will find themselves actually acting or reacting as a result of you having asked that question. That, In other ways, you have to think about what type of questions are appropriate for, for this stage, wherever you are with that client. Yeah. No, no, sure. <clears throat> you know, like, um, if, if oh, depending on, 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 like, your penchant and, or your, your, your um, gut need, uh, like for me, I I I love uh, philosophy, right? So so yes. research wise, you know, this issue of questioning uh, goes back to that Socratic uh, questioning, you you know. Uh, yes. Looking and and it's like a I picture it as a spiral. Mm. You know, my my kids were growing up. Uh, uh, they, they like, I don't know, kids are sort of natural coaches. And what would happen is they would apply the Socratic uh, questioning uh, uh, that we use in, in coaching, you know, uh, asking great questions or trying your best to ask great questions. Like they would say, like, 
like mommy how does a tree grow and i would say uh, um, well what do you think and then they'd say something about okay uh, maybe it comes from pot and i'd say yeah maybe and then maybe next week they'd come back and they'd say hey mommy you know what the nursery school teacher said it doesn't come from god it comes from a seed and so yeah. i mean i had no need to judge the nursery school teacher so then i'd say yes uh, i i think it can come from a seed you know and and kids do it so naturally and i don't know who mm. has the ability as we grow and, and and come adults but so again you know thinking it right to what you were saying the structure of some of the questions so like let's say for example in uh, um I, i'm i'm naturally forward thinking person yes right so like like for me, at, at that stage now that is like stage 7 the the last uh, um i i i would uh, like to ask uh, things about like like how's it going you know like what progress do you think you're making uh mm. what, what do you think will be your next step you know uh uh how do you feel about the progress you're making but if we link it now to you know we were going to talk a little bit about the benefits and the drawbacks mm. uh, of the model uh you know you know again linked to that the research is saying that when 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 coaches have have got this feedback from their their clients um they, some of them found that the benefits were that uh, um it was uh, coach and coachy led so it was like co creation but so yeah. thought that a disadvantage was if you uh, uh took it at like a ridiculous pace the 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 employee can actually feel like you nagging them and chasing them you know and and how hmm. if you as manager for example and again maybe that's an important point that i should just i experienced with this model and mm. maybe i felt it could have been a, a i don't know a disadvantage but that's my experience that it's it's for me it seems to work best when it's a manager facilitating and and leading and driving a coaching program what we call a manager coach correct correct that's the whole idea and 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 actually i i actually wanted to ask you that you know there's so much that coaching borrows out of psychology right 
and uh, and a Socratic questioning is actually the root or the source of 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 of, of questioning questions mastery in coaching. Uh, because it, it doesn't mean that when you ask this question, you should you should be worried about how the question is going to be answered. All what you are doing is that you are using the questions to for the employees to realize that they have the answers inside themselves. Because if you don't ask the questions, they are not ever going to be they are never going to try to find answer. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, in in, in psychology, like there are these um, yeah, fundamentally two branches. It's why I actually left the profession, uh, uh, like the formal profession of psychology. I don't practice as a psychologist. I haven't for the last five years. You know, um, yes, because it it felt um, it felt like it wasn't progressive enough. Yeah, and maybe for my personality, you know, I was having these continuous. I would call it, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, revolutionary fights with the psych yeah. board and the HPSA and things, the health council, um, about the fact that the syllabus I did in psychology for my master's uh, uh, for, in 1992, 93, it, it didn't change when I served on the board uh, in 2013 to, to 2017. It yeah. the curriculum hadn't changed, you see. So, so where coaching appeal to me is, it's an ongoing model. I have no doubt that, like, uh, you know, like you were talking about uh, so what more uh, earlier and the, the 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 research there with Grow. Um, I I have every confidence that there is a coach in this platform mm. who who will develop another extension. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and hopefully we live to see it. And, and you know, we'll, we'll grow and learn from that, essentially, you know? Yeah, yeah. I actually wanted to affirm you as well, because in coaching, I, I, I went into coaching school looking forward to learn, A to Z. And day one in the school, they said, no, there's, we are not going to give you a textbooks to read from. We're going to work with you with what you are bringing into the coaching. And, and I, was, I was quite blown away. I said, oh my goodness. Within one hour, they made us do what we call fish bowl, which means you, 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 you go forward and you practice coaching. And, and then we knew nothing about coaching. They just gave us a few guidelines and, uh, and, and, and then from there they said, you have started now, you are gonna perfect this going forward. In this first fish bowl, you were very much instructing than actually asking questions. Or you were very much judging instead of affirming a person, encouraging people to, to, to go deeper. So, so wh why I say I want to affirm you is that you, you come into coaching either as a coach or a coachee with, with who you are. What you are is what we are going to work with. Now, that's why I wanted to say that there's so much perspective that you're bringing into coaching from your psychology background, uh, but, but, but we know that we will keep on reminding you that coaching is not counseling. It, it, you just need to be aware of that. And then also the fact that uh, counseling and all these others, they are all helping profession, and coaching is one of the helping profession. As long as you understand that it's not for you to tell the client the answers, but to help the clients figure out the answers themselves. So, so 50% of that, 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 co that com context, that perspective, is already there. What you need to do now is just the, the methodology, the techniques, and the, 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 the models as we are exposing you to right now. How does that make you feel? No, no, no. That makes me feel perfect. I'll tell you why. Because, you know, you know when I was doing clinical work, for example, uh, so I went, came from PE and I went back to KwaZulu-Natal, right? And um, so when I was, like, doing clinical work in hospitals, uh, you, you know, as a, as a, 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 a clinician, my clini clinical work, well, working with patients, you know, um, uh, uh, one, for, for a start, I, I didn't like the fact that you're working pe with people when they were already broken, and I'm saying that in inverted commas, not a judgment, instead yes. of working with the person while they are whole. 
And and the last thing linked to what you were saying is that it was a very strict hierarchy. So in a hospital, the psychiatrist was the god of all the wards. Mm. And after a psychiatrist came a clinical psychologist. After a clinical psychologist, there was a counseling psychologist that they looked down on. Below a counseling psychologist was a guidance counselor. Below a guidance counselor was an occupational therapist and carried on like that, you know, uh, which, God, it really uh, got my, it, it really galled me. So that, that hierarchic thing, because like it's, it's not actually the psychiatrist or the, like for example, the psychiatrist will not acknowledge that they're not trained to do therapy. Mm-hmm. They are trained to use uh, biological methods. Okay. Like we as coaches, like we as coaches, it's very clearly emphasized in the coaching school that you are not going to be trained to be a therapist. That's not your profession. If you come across a client that needs therapy, it's not for you to, to pretend to be one, but refer. Yeah, you refer through your experience. At any stage, like again with the step six, at any stage, if if your instinct and experience is telling you, you know what, I am going beyond the realm of what feels normal, and there's like a discomfort I am now feeling inside of me as a coachee. Personally, mm. I'll either refer to another coach. That's yes. my first course of action. Refer to another coach because maybe that person will, will have a, a, more, a better, you, you know, progress with this person. But at the same time, if one or two or maybe even three of us are getting this discomfort when we have our case conferences or our learning platforms like this, then we can make the decision that, you know what, uh-uh, we, we're not dealing with within the, the so-called uh, 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 realm of what is regarded as appropriate human behavior. And, and mm. we probably got to refer to whoever a naturalist is. You, you know, it can be... Yes. But, but... Let, let's bring in, uh, let's, let's bring in uh, inputs from uh, Coach Dolores. Uh, she's asking, don't you think where psychology is beneficial is more on therapy, where you apply the DSM diagnosis and then have a multidisciplinary approach to assisting the client, which includes coaching? Not really, because uh, I think the psychology background in human factors. Right. What Please move mean? around a little bit. I think you are cutting. Uh, uh... Are we more emotional creatures? Uh, how do people? I'm I'm speaking right into the microphone, though, Sam. Yeah, no, no, I was saying that maybe move around because I was losing you, but I can hear you. That's fine. Carry on. All right. Yeah. So, so you know, from the uh, um. You, you get human factors from psychology. What drives people? Are, are people more emotional? Are they more cognitive and intellectual? Uh, 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 and and are, is, is their life quest to seek balance, right? So, so, so that's, that's what psychology teaches you. Psychology... Uh, uh,
Oh yeah. Okay. We lost uh, Coach Sash. Uh, uh, I think she will. She she will log in again. I, I could. I could feel that we were on the verge of uh, of, of of losing her. Um, let's 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 give her chance to log in. This is the coaches learning forum. Uh, we are talking about the achieve coaching model. We are with Coach Sash. Uh, we just lost her now, and hopefully she will come back. Colleagues, drop me a note in the chat box if you hear me. I I don't know whether the connection problem was with uh, on the side of Sash or it was on my side, but I, I, I have a full connection here on my side. If you can drop me a note, uh, that will be... That will be helpful. We were, we are almost close to coming to an end of the of the show. I hope we are able to get uh, 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 Serge coming back to to wrap it up for us. Um, uh, I hope we haven't lost much of her input because it has always been wobbly. But the the insights that we are getting from her, especially from her perspective. As a, as, a, as a former psychologist, it's very, very helpful. I'm actually enjoying this part of the conversation. And indeed, as coaches, it's important for us to know the difference and the type of question as well that uh, Coach Dolores has asked. It's a very common question being asked. Many of our colleagues come from the psychology background. And one of the challenges they are always faced with is uh, to unlearn some of the things they've learned from psychology. Because uh, as we have said, coaching is not therapy uh, or counseling. And one should be careful not to try and continue coaching somebody that actually needs more of uh, counseling or therapy than coaching. And the reason is that we believe that coaching is uh, is progressive, it's, posit- it's about positivity, uh, it's not about repairing the damage uh, in, in inverted commas that a client could be going through. Uh, are you are you back, uh, 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 Coach Sesh? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm back. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, um... Yeah, I can hear you even if I cannot see the icon in the studio, but I think my colleagues are, are hearing you. Uh, carry on. I was just, just trying to wrap up what you were addressing and I was saying that... Uh, it's a wonderful what we are discussing as coaches because it's important for us to know the difference between what we are and what we are not, uh, which specifically relates to the challenges that many uh, people like yourself that come from psychology sometimes experience in transitioning from being uh, therapists or counselors into becoming coaches. You want to take it from there? Yeah, no. Um, you know, you were talking earlier about I wouldn't even call it unlearning. I think, I think we are more complex personally as human beings than either being this or being that. Yes. We, as, as, as formally trained coaches, we, we are formally trained. Yes. The difference between coaching and therapy. We are formally yes. trained to know the difference between coaching and counseling. We formally train to know the difference between coaching and guidance, you know. And similarly, we also even formally trained to know that coaching is not a friendship. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yeah. So so we, we, we know that as formally trained coaches, um, maybe it's a little bit harder for beginner coaches, but I think for the coaches on our platform who are quite experienced, you know, um, mm-hmm. it's not that difficult to make mm-hmm. the shift. But in your own life, you don't have to be this or that. You know, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a, a colleague, I'm a mentor, you know, I'm, I'm so many things. And often all those things at the same time. Uh, I wonder, Sam, if that's because I'm a woman and I can multitask, let me tease you there. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I can only say that your experience uh, make you become a better person. And if you can access the insights that are there in you as a result of what you have gone through, 
it's sufficient. Whether you would want to do things at the same time, like talking and thinking, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think depending on how you, uh, um, uh, what's this, uh, how how you function, like your own wiring. Mm. Mm. Um, some prefer to go to a thinking mode first. Some yes. To, to to draw on a feeling mode. I think our educational system has pushed for people to always go into a thinking mode. Mm. Whereas mm. maybe our quest in life is to find some kind of balance. And look, this is a wrap-up comment from me, but I'm like, I'm happy to listen and, and you know, even get advice and from others here. But mm. um, uh, uh, in your own uh, life, uh, you, I think we all sort of strive for for some kind of of balance between heart and mind, mm. you know? and uh, maybe we even now in our fifties we like starting that. Qu- mm. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I think we, uh, yeah, we 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 close to exhausting the time available for us. If you hear me to, uh, uh, search, perhaps maybe on that note, we should try and wrap up. I think this has been very rich conversation. I'm sure the colleagues on the platform will agree with me, right? Okay. It looks like we have lost uh, Coach Sesh, but we are at that point where we, we, we really want to wrap up. Uh, it's a pity she's not here to wrap up. I hope she comes back. But let me remind the colleagues that this is a coaches learning forum. This is the platform that we get together as coaches. And for now, we are focusing on the various coaches, coaching models, which really help us deepen our knowledge of coaching uh, and, and also experience learning from each other. So we are certainly uh, 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 going to... Uh, hear more about other mod- mod- models uh, that are to come. As indicated, uh, the next one is on the 4th of October, uh, 2022. It's 1,800 hours to 2,800 hours. And we will be talking about the clear coaching model. And the guests will be coaches Sedi Mantuku and Stumo Ananias Chiloani. So uh, seeing that we are not able to reconnect with uh, Coach Sesh, let me thank you, colleagues, for tuning in. I don't know about you. I'm really getting richer and richer the more I listen to our colleagues presenting on these models. It is it is really deepening my my knowledge and uh, of coaching. Um, yeah, let's uh, uh, leave it there. This this was uh, Comesa Radio podcast, and uh, my name is uh, Sam Zima. And, and I can see uh, some coaches are still dropping some notes uh, from Tosi. She's saying that the aspect of no friendship zone between coach and coaches can be tricky. Surely it does not have to be close encounters between the two, but warmth is a necessity. Absolutely, uh, Coach Tosi. We all, I always tell my clients that I'm their thinking partner. We are in a relationship, but a professional coaching relationship um, they are confident, and uh, but I'm going to hold them accountable because there is a business of coaching and there is a reason why we are in this relationship and it is about what the client wants us to help them with. Yes, over time you develop that uh, 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 connection, but one should actually have boundaries. The boundaries should remain within the professional uh, relationship of some sort. Because uh, in many cases, you once somebody's coach, always somebody's coach. They could come back to you for assistance in other areas, different topics, different themes. But the reality is that coaching is a is a professional relationship. Thank you for raising that. It's always important to remind ourselves of these boundaries that we need to respect. Yeah. So that was it. Uh, uh, the mind, the journey, the destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. The Coaches uh, Learning Forum program is based on the principles of the idea. 
we inform and entertain, we develop and educate, educate, we empower and support, we associate and network. That is the idea. Thanks to Coach Sesh, we have learned a lot, learned a lot. Posting the podcast so that those who have missed it can catch up uh, at your own time. Thank you very much for tuning in. Take care. We look forward to connect with you uh, uh, as we will be unpacking with coaches uh, Seri Mantoku and Sutumo Chilwane on the clear coaching model on the 5th of October, as mentioned. Thank you. Take care and goodbye.